okay so let's start let's start we want to review a new topic we want to review a new topic and the topic we want to review is called external reconstruction that is the topic we want to review so let me review it slightly fast what we say before we do the question i want us to do let me review the topic slightly now we said assuming your company a assuming you are a company a and you want to or you are the company to be reconstructed through external reconstruction we say when a company is to be reconstructed through external reconstruction then another company let's call it company b will have to come and buy the business of company a and so we said a we normally call it the selling company while b we say we normally call it the purchasing company that is if you remember that's what we say company a which is being reconstructed we said company a must close their books that means they must be liquidated company a must be liquidated and in the process of liquidating themselves they must close their books company b which is buying company a we said they normally open their books they normally open their books so we want to go through and ask ourselves what are the accounting entries that you as a selling company you make when you are selling your business to company b in other words what are the entries in the books of the selling company we went through many accounting entries we went through many accounting entries in the books of the selling company and i want to remind them to you first before we do a question we said in the books of the selling company there are many and you should try and remember as many as you can number one company a don't forget we said they are closing their books so we said number one entry is for company a they will have to close all assets close all assets taken over they close all assets taken over from them by b limited they have to close them at their book values they have to close them at their book values to an account you are calling realization account you company a which assets are you giving to company b could be you're giving them your machinery motor vehicle furniture building and so on close those assets to an account you are calling realization account so we said you debit realization you debit realization and you credit the asset we said assets are always a debit balance and so to close them you credit those assets and you debit realization that was our entry number one close all assets taken over at their book values to the realization account that was number one number two we said you ask company b whatever liabilities you are giving to company a no whatever you a sorry you are giving whatever law of your liabilities you are giving to company b close them also so number two we said with liabilities taken over with liabilities taken over you as company a we said liabilities are always a credit balance liabilities are always a credit balance and therefore to close those liabilities you have to debit the liabilities and we said you credit realization and you credit realization so that was our entry number two which says with the liabilities taken over you debit liabilities to close them and we said you credit realization that was all for number two number three entry we said you as company b ah a sorry you as company a you are selling your business to company b there must be something you are charging company a there must be something sorry you are charging company b you company a you are selling your business to company b there must be something you are charging company b that which you are charging them is what we were calling the purchase consideration 
is what we were calling the purchase consideration. And so we said, whatever is the purchase consideration, whatever is the purchase consideration, whatever the, you will calculate, normally it's not given. In an exam, that figure called purchase consideration, you know, it's never given. It's something you have to calculate. We shall have to remind ourselves. Good. But whatever you calculate as the purchase consideration, we said you as a whole, as a company A, you must debit the purchasing company. Whatever the purchase consideration, we say you are charging them. They are not paying now, but you are charging them whatever it is. Meaning you are creating a data by the name of company A. You are creating a data by the name of company B, sorry. That was our entry number three, which says with the purchase consideration, you debit the purchasing company and you credit realization and you credit realization. That's what we said you do. That was our entry number three. Number four to Kasema, because company A must be liquidated, because company A must be liquidated, we said normally it's their responsibility to liquidate themselves. It is their responsibility to liquidate themselves before they can sell their business to company B. So they may be required or they may be forced to incur what we call liquidation expenses. So we said number four, whatever is the liquidation expenses, you as company A, it is your cost to liquidate yourself. So if you had to spend some money to liquidate yourself, you as company A, if you had to spend that money, we said you debit realization and we said you credit bank. With any liquidation expenses, we said you debit, if you are paying them, you debit realization and you credit bank. Otherwise, I hope you do remember we said, if you as company A, you incurred it, that means you're not the one who paid it, but B could have paid it on your behalf. Remember we were saying, as much as you want to sell your business to company B, you may not have the money to liquidate yourself. But company B wants to buy you. So you company A, because you may not have money to liquidate yourself, company B may give you some money for you to liquidate yourself. So it is your cost, you company A. But because you don't have the money, B paid it on your behalf. So we normally say you as A, you incurred, you incurred that cost but never paid. So even if you incurred it, we normally debit realization and you credit an account we normally call provision for liquidation expense. I hope you remember that. That if you incurred but not paid, you still debit realization and you credit provision for liquidation expense. That means you are crediting an account called provision. It's a liability. So you create that liability so that when B gives you the money to pay for the liquidation, you now pay the liability through that account. You pay the amount through that liability by now debiting liability and crediting bank. But for now, because you are only incurring it but not paying, you first create a liability so that when you receive the money from B, you will pay that amount. Good. That was entry number three. Number four, sorry. Number five. Number five, I took you to number one, if you remember. For number five, I took you to step one. I told you. For step one, we are closing all assets taken, taken over by company B. What if you, company A, you have some assets which B does not want to take over from you? What do you do? Maybe they don't want to take over your motor vehicle. And don't forget, we are liquidating company A. And you cannot liquidate a company and leave it with some account spending. No. So we said, if there are any assets which were not taken over by B, but you, company A, you decided to sell them on your own. That's what we said. With assets not taken over, not taken over, but sold by you, the selling company, with assets not taken over, with assets not taken over by the purchasing company, but sold. 
So you as A, you could have sold your motor vehicle or sold your furniture or sold your building if B did not want to take it over. We say it, when you sell it, you debit bank and you credit the asset. Let us assume it's a motor vehicle. Maybe it has a book value of maybe 2 million. And the question told you, you sold it for 1.5 million. So you must have debited bank and you must have credited motor vehicle. Then whatever is the balance in this motor vehicle account, that balance could either be a gain or loss on disposal of the asset. We said that balance, you take it to the realization account. Like now I would credit the asset by 500, I would debit realization. What if I sold the asset for 2.5 when it had a book value of 2 million? I know now I sold it again. I would debit the asset by 500 and credit realization. That was our entry number five with any assets not taken over but sold by the selling company. I told you or remember when we have questions, not many questions do have such an item, but one or two may have that in case an asset is sold by you, the selling company. Number six. For number six, I also took you back to number two. For number six, I took you back to number two. Number two, we said with the liabilities taken over. What if you company B, sorry, company A, what if you company A, you have some of your liabilities, which company B did not want to take over? Company A has some liabilities like creditors, which B decided they're not going to take over from you. And yet we are liquidating ourselves. We can't leave some accounts pending. So you company A, you may have decided that you will pay for yourself that amount. So to Kasema number six is, with the liabilities not taken over, with the liabilities not taken over, not taken over, but paid, but paid by the selling company. You company A, you could have decided to sell them on your own. You could have decided to pay, sorry, not to sell, to pay those liabilities. Let us assume they are creditors. Let us assume they are creditors. So you must have gone to the creditor's account. We know creditors are always a credit balance. Let us assume the balance is 2 million. And the question tells you, creditors who are willing to accept maybe 1.5 million or 1.8 million in full. So you company A, you paid them. So you must have debited creditors by 1.8 million and you must have credited bank. So with any liabilities not taken over, but paid by the selling company, you debit liability, whichever it is, and you credit bank. Of course, from this account, I can't leave it pending. I owe my creditors 2 million, but they were willing to accept 1.8 million in full. So that difference of 200, we said could be a discount received. So if you as company A, you receive some discount from your creditors, we said you debit creditors and you credit real realization. If there's any discount you are receiving, good. That was our entry number six, which says with the liabilities taken over, not taken over, but paid by the selling company. Again, it's normally not a common item in an exam. It's normally not a common item. So number five and six, they are normally not common. Good. Let's go to number seven. I do hope you remember because we are revising. I told you number seven, eight, and nine, they are all related. I hope you remember number seven, eight, and nine. We said they are all related. What is the relationship? I do hope you remember we say it. Whenever you are liquidating a company, at the end of the day, all the stakeholders must be paid what is due to them. All the stakeholders must be paid what is due to them. And say we said one group of stakeholders you have to pay are the ordinary shareholders. You as company A, you have ordinary shareholders to pay. Then I told you, for any company, there are many things that you as a company, you could be owing to your shareholders. 
one could be ordinary share capital another one could be share premium another one could be general reserve another one could be revaluation reserve retained losses retained profit all these are things that belong to shareholders and i told you when it comes to liquidation of a company you don't pay the shareholders what you owe to them through those various accounts that means you pay their share capital through capital their share premium through share premium no we say it in state transfer everything you owe to that shareholder transfer everything you owe to the shareholders to one account so that when the time of payment comes i only pay them through one account i don't pay them through the piecemeal accounts no so our step number seven to kasema you transfer what you now transfer the balance of the ordinary share capital transfer balance of ordinary share capital ordinary share capital to which account i told you create a liability account you create a liability account for the ordinary shareholders you create a liability account for the ordinary shareholders where you will transfer everything that belongs to them in that account that account you are calling it ordinary shareholders members account if you remember we were calling it ordinary shareholders members account so our step number seven says transfer the balance of the ordinary share capital to the ordinary shareholders members we know share capital is always a credit balance and therefore to close it we have to debit share capital and credit ordinary shareholders that's what we shall do as our step number seven which says transfer the balance of the ordinary share capital to the ordinary shareholders members good then we said that's not all you owe to the shareholders what else do you owe to them that's what i want to do number eight we said you now transfer reserves you transfer reserves to the ordinary shareholders reserves are also things that belong to the shareholders whether it's a positive reserve or it's a negative reserve we said it doesn't matter if it's a positive reserve like share premium it's something that belongs to the shareholders how do you transfer it you debit share premium because a reserve like share premium is a credit balance to close it you debit share premium and we said you credit the members that's another thing you owe to the members to the members you come and give them their share premium it could be general reserve it could be revaluation reserve you still debit that reserve and you credit ordinary shareholders members then we say there could be another form of reserve which could be a negative reserve of course like retained losses it's a reserve but a negative reserve and it is obvious it will be part of the question why because we say it normally you reconstruct companies because they have been making losses over a long period of time so there will be always a negative reserve in the balance sheet of company a that is the retained losses losses are always a debit balance so to close that p and account because if i go to the p and account i'll find a loss which is a debit balance it's an amount that belongs to shareholders it's a reserve so I close that PL account. How? By crediting PL account and I debit the members. Whatever it is, that is our entry number eight, which says transfer reserves to the ordinary shareholders' members. Whether the reserve is a positive reserve or a negative reserve. That's what we said. Good. So I'm through with our step number eight. Number nine. Number nine, we say, for number nine, I took you back. For number nine, I took you back to step number one and step five. Step number one says, close all assets taken over. Number five says, with any assets not taken over, but done what? But sold. What if you company A, you have some assets? which company B did not take over in step one. And at the same time, you as company A, you could get somebody to sell them too. So you have some assets which B can't take over and you can't get anybody to sell them too. 
Under number five, what do you do? You say it. Such an assets, and mostly they are assets which are normally in form of intangible assets. Maybe copyright, goodwill, patent, trademarks. These are assets that you could give to company B because they don't want them. You could sell a goodwill on its own. Nobody wants to buy your goodwill because you are reconstructing the company and many other intangible assets. What do you do? We say it, it is obvious somebody must take over the loss of such assets. And who is this that must take over the loss of such an assets? We say it is the ordinary shareholders. So our step number nine, we said, you transfer again such assets. We classified them as fictitious assets. You transfer any fictitious assets to the ordinary shareholders members. Give them the loss of such assets. We know assets are always a debit balance. So to close those a debit, you credit the asset and you debit ordinary shareholders members. Give the members or the ordinary shareholders the loss of that asset by debiting the ordinary shareholders members and crediting whichever fictitious asset. Crediting whichever fictitious asset. That was our step number nine. Number 10. I do hope you remember these entries. Number 10. Number 10, we said, the way you have done this for ordinary, that is number seven, eight, and nine. You had to take everything you owe to the ordinary shareholders to one account so that when it comes to the time of payment, I only pay them once. Okay. Now, number 10, again, you as company A, you may not be only having one group of stakeholders. You may have other group of stakeholders like preference shareholders who again must be paid, who again must be paid. So we say it again, step number 10 is that you transfer the balance of the preference share capital because you also have preference shareholders to pay in your company. You transfer the balance of the preference share capital to an account. You can't pay them their capital through capital account, just like you couldn't pay the shareholders called ordinary through their share capital account. No. So for preference also, you create a liability for them so that anything you owe to the preference shareholders will be transferred to that account, just like you have done for the ordinary. For the preference shareholders, we normally call their account, it's a liability account still, we normally call it preference shareholders members preference shareholders, members. So step number 10 says, transfer the balance of the preference share capital to the preference shareholders, members. How? Again, we know preference share capital is a credit balance. To close it, you debit preference share capital and you credit the members. So you come and see your preference share capital, whatever it is. Good. That was our entry number 10. Till under number 10, we say it, what if you are told by the question that company A has not been paying the arrears of the dividend to the preference shareholders? For the last two years or three years, as a company, we have not paid them arrears. You see, if you go to the balance sheet of that company, you will not find a liability called preference dividends in arrears. No. But we said it's an example of a contingent liability if you remember and we said contingent liabilities don't appear in the balance sheet contingent liabilities don't appear in the balance sheet so you as company a because you have not paid your preference shareholders dividends for the last two years or three years first you will be required to calculate then once you calculate the amount of the arrears make it a liability it's an amount that you now owe to the preference shareholders so still under number 10, we say that if there are any dividends that are still in arrears, we say you will debit realization. We say you will debit realization with any preference dividends in arrears. You debit realization and we credit the members. It's an amount that you owe to the preference shareholders members. So you come and credit preference shareholders members with their dividends which are in arrears. That is all for step number 10. 
which says transfer the balance of the preferential capital to the preferential holders members have debited preferential capital have credited preferential holders members then i've gone further and said with any preference dividends that are still in arrears we debit realization and you credit the members that's what we say that's all for step number 10 number 11 for number 11 if you remember when we were doing the topic i took you back to step number three if you look at number three number three we have said with the purchase consideration that's what we have said in step three with the purchase consideration what is it that you charged you charged company b u a whatever you are charging them or whatever you charge them you remember you debited realization you debited sorry you debited the purchasing company you debited the purchasing company here and you credited realization by whatever the purchase consideration a time has come now for company b to pay you as a company b has to pay you that amount whichever the amount so our step number 11 we said with the receipt of the purchase consideration with the receipt of the purchase consideration either it could be in form of cash or in form of shares or it could be in form of debentures whatever form company b decides to pay you then you as a you are receiving that amount so that was our step number 11 which says with the receipt of the purchase consideration with the receipt of the purchase consideration we debit if you are receiving cash you will debit cash and credit the purchasing company here whatever it is if you are receiving shares you will debit shares remember you are receiving not issuing shares if the company issuing the amount normally credit share capital you as a a you are receiving shares you are not issuing shares so you are receiving them as an asset so you will debit shares and credit the purchasing company whatever it is if company b gave you debentures again you will debit debentures you are receiving them again not issuing debentures you will debit debentures and credit the purchasing company that is our step number 11 which says with the receipt of the purchase consideration either in form of cash shares or debentures you debit cash you debit shares you debit debentures and you credit the purchasing company and you credit the purchasing company that was our entry number 11 12. now remember from number 11 you have just received the payment you company a and i have told you when it comes to company a they must liquidate themselves and i also told you all the stakeholders of company a must be paid what is due to them now that i've received cash me as a now that i've received shares now that i've received debentures from step number 11 a time has come for me to start paying my stakeholders i have from this illustration from this illustration we have two groups of stakeholders who have to be paid the ordinary and the preference so the question is who do we pay first of course you know whenever a company is liquidated normally preference holders rank first in order of priority so you will go find out from the question what are you paying the preference so step number 12 says pay preference shareholders what is due to them pay the preference shareholders if you are giving them cash you received that cash go credit cash and debit the members called preference here go debit the members or preference whatever it is if the question tells you you are giving them shares go credit shares where here go credit shares and debit the members whatever it is that you are giving them if the question tells you you are giving them debentures go credit debentures and debit the members who these preference shareholders whatever it is that the question guides you the question will guide you as to what you are giving them that's our step number 12 of says 
pay the preference shareholders what is due to them either in form of cash shares or debentures you credit cash or you credit shares or you credit debentures and you debit preference shareholders members account good that was our step number 12 now listen number 13 if you look at this account called preference shareholders members on the credit side that's what you owe to them on the credit side that's what you owe to them on the debit side that's what you have given them as a payment suppose for illustration purposes that in total you owe them two million on the credit side but when you add all these various forms of payment let me assume the amount to 1.8 million what does it mean that i owe them two million but they are willing to accept 1.8 million as their payment there's a difference of 200 that 200 we said which is our step number 13 now which says with the balance in the preference shareholders members with the balance in the preference shareholders members being either a gain or loss on payment ours we owe them 2 million on the credit we have paid them only 1.8 there's a gain of 200 where do you take that gain we said you take it to the realization account remember we are selling our business so we bring it to the realization whatever it is what if we owed them who oh, the preference on the credit side we owed them 2 million but what if now we paid them 2.8 million on the debit meaning there's a difference of 800 on the credit we owe them 2 million but they accepted 2.8 as a payment so we are paying them more than we owe to them that's a loss to us on payment we are paying them more than what we owe to them that's a loss on payment again you still transfer it to the realization account you still transfer it to the realization account good that's our step number 13 but 12 of Tumesema paid the preference. Number 13, now we are saying with the balance in the preference shareholders may, members with the balance in the preference shareholders members, either being a gain or loss on payment. Number 14, we are selling our business. We are company A selling our business. Is it possible that we are selling our business either at a gain or we are selling our business at a loss that's where we want to find out so our step number 14 says with the balance in the realization account with the balance in the realization account that balance will either be a gain or loss on payment will either be a gain or loss on payment listen if you look at this realization account on the debit side that's what i gave out in terms of assets and the expenses I incurred, me as company B, company A, sorry. On the credit side, that's what I'm charging them. So if what I'm going to receive, which is on the credit, is more than what I'm giving out on the debit, then the difference will be on the debit side. What does it tell us? If you are receiving more than what you are giving out, then you sold your business at a gain. So we normally say if the difference is on the debit side it's a gain on realization what if on the debit what you are debiting is more than what is on the credit it means what you gave out is more than the amount you're going to receive so you must have sold your business at a loss that loss will be on the credit side then the question tell us now the question is who takes over the loss or the gain of selling this business say it it is the owners of the company they are the ones to take over the gain or the loss of selling our business who are the owners the ordinary shareholders they are the ones who must be taking over the gain or loss so if it's a loss again like i said let's assume it again you will debit the realization and you credit ordinary shareholders members give them that gain 
you credit ordinary shareholders members here and you give them their gain that's our entry number 14 number 15 and the last one in the books of the selling company this is with the balance in the realization balance in realization account which is either gain or loss number 15 and the last one the last people to be paid are the ordinary shareholders to pay the ordinary shareholders now that's what we want to do we want to pay the ordinary shareholders they are the last people to be paid the question might tell you you are giving them cash or you are giving them debentures don't forget you received cash you received debentures you received shares so whatever form of payment you are giving to them go credit those assets if it's cash you credit cash if it's shares you credit shares if it's debentures you credit debentures and you debit the ordinary shareholders members account we are paying them we come and debit ordinary shareholders members and you come and say your yeah, debit cash whatever it is maybe you're giving them shares whatever it is maybe you're giving them debentures whatever it is those are the accounting entries that we said are used in the books of the selling company good okay maybe to remind you again very fast what are the accounting entries in the books of b b is our purchasing company now for them they are not many now but before i leave that area before i leave those areas now listen in most questions listen what i want you to do is to understand the concept of the entries in the books of the selling you may not remember all this but the concept is this remember the first three entries i was closing 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 the assets taken over liabilities taken over and with the purchase those three entries you will always find them in any question some questions have the liquidation expenses also but for entry number five and six listen for entry number five and six I told you not many questions do have them those are assets not taken over but sold liabilities not taken over but paid not many questions do have them so those ones you can avoid getting them in a question now number seven eight and nine i told you it's what it's closing everything you owe to the ordinary shareholders one account called ordinary shareholders may members then I told you number 10, do the same for preference. So you can see I started up there by closing the accounts, closing the accounts, closing the accounts. Then number three, I charged. Number three, I charged the purchase consideration. Then number six, seven, now eight and nine, seven, eight and nine, I record what I owe to the ordinary. I create a liability called ordinary shareholders members. Number 10, I do the same hope you are getting to so close 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 then charge create liabilities for the stakeholders for the stakeholders whichever the stakeholders you have in your company create a liability for them because they will have to be paid and you can't pay them through their account no one stakeholder in our illustration are the ordinary the other stakeholders are the preference you could also have debenture holders but whoever the stakeholders are create a liability for them then once you create those liabilities, receive the purchase consideration. Once you receive, now start paying, start paying, start paying, start paying. I hope you are getting the concept. Good. So for the entries in the books of the selling, just close the books, close, 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 close. Start creating liabilities, creating liabilities for the stakeholders. Receive the purchase consideration. Then start paying, start paying, start paying, start paying. Hope you are getting the point. Good. Now, in the books of the purchasing company, they are normally not many. Let me remind you those entries now in the books of the purchasing company. In the books of the purchasing company now. In purchasing companies books. In books of purchasing company. Now, here there are normally six entries. Only six. Those are the ones I want to go through. Number 
whatever you be, now we are in books of B. Whatever you be, you are being charged by company A. That is the purchase consideration. Whatever is your purchase consideration, you as company B, you owe company A that amount. You owe company A that amount. So you B, you will create a liability for that. By debiting an account called business purchase, if you remember, with the purchase consideration, you debit business purchase and you credit the sellers. Our seller is company A limited. Whatever is the purchase consideration, A limited, whatever it is. That's our entry number one, which says with the purchase consideration, you debit the purchasing company, uh, sorry, you debit business purchase, you credit the selling company, meaning you are creating a liability. This liability we are creating is like what you can now call a creditor. Remember in the books of the selling, they were creating a data. Now you B, you create a creditor. It's like you owe company A, whatever it is. That's our step number one. Number two to Kasema. Number two to Kasema. With the liabilities that you as company B, you are taking over. With the liabilities taken over. What liabilities of company A did you take over? You B limited. Whichever liabilities you took over, they become your own liabilities. They become your own liabilities. So you will go and credit those liabilities. We know liabilities are always a credit balance. So you go credit those liabilities and you debit business purchase. That is with the liabilities taken over. That's our entry number two. With the liabilities taken over. Number three. Number three we say... With the assets taken over, you as company A, company B, sorry, which assets are you taking over? Listen, the question will tell you which assets you took over and at what value you took them over. So in your books, you company B, you will debit those assets that you are taking over because they are now yours and you credit business purchase, listen, and credit business purchase with those assets at whichever agreed, listen, at whichever agreed values. In the books of the selling company, when I was going through the 14 entries, the 15, number one was in the books of the selling, I told you close all assets taken over, I told you at their book, at their book values. So company A was closing them at their book values. B will shall the B will take them over at agreed values. Some questions may tell you B limited took over the following assets at the following fair va fair value machinery this much furniture this much and so on. Good, but for company A, they will have to close the assets as they are appearing in the balance sheet. Those are the book values, but B. You will be told by the additional that B took over the following assets at the following agreed values. Good. We are through with step number three, which says with the assets taken over at agreed values. You debit assets, you credit business purchase. Good. Number four. Number four, we see it with the balance in the business purchase now, with the balance in the business purchase. Whatever is the balance in this account, that balance we say it could be either goodwill or what you are calling capital reserve. How? Remember we said these are the assets you are taking over and this is the liability you are taking over. So when you net those two, you remain with what we call net assets. Then I can see here we have a purchase consideration. So let us assume that the purchase consideration is 50 million. But the assets you are taking over, the net assets you are taking over is 45 million. So the purchase consideration now is higher than the net assets taken over. So the question is, why should I pay more to acquire less? Me as company B, I am paying 50, but I'm buying assets amounting to 45. Why should I pay more to acquire less? 
there must be something else you are buying. And that's what you are calling goodwill. With that 5 million, you will debit goodwill, it's an asset, and you'll credit business purchase. What if the purchase consideration is 50, but the net assets you are taking over are 55? Meaning, you are paying 50 to acquire assets amounting to 55. You are paying less to acquire more. You are buying partner, this company A, U, B, you are going to pay 50, but what you are taking over is 55. So we say, you are buying this business at a profit. You are paying 50 to acquire 55. You are buying the business at a profit. That profit, we said, should be considered as a capital reserve. That profit, we said, should be considered as a capital reserve. So if the difference is on this side of the debit, then that difference, you call it a capital reserve. It's a profit on purchase, but we said you consider it as a capital reserve. Good. So that's all for number four. I go to number five. Now, number five, I go back to number one. Number one, I told you with the purchase consideration, you had to create a liability that you owe to A Limited, you are company B. So here is what you did. You created that liability. Now, a time has come for you, company B, to pay company A. Again, you can decide that you're going to pay them that amount either in cash or in terms of shares or in terms of debentures. You are the company giving out now. So our step number five says, our step number five says, with cash, with cash and debentures, not shares, with cash or debentures given as a payment, given as a payment of the purchase consideration here you will debit the sellers credit cash you are giving cash or whatever the amount if you are giving debentures you company b you are issuing debentures you must credit your debenture account so you will debit the sellers and credit debentures that's our entry number four number five sorry number six if the question tells you that company B issued some shares. Company B issued some shares as a payment of this purchase consideration. Then, listen, whatever is the value of the shares, we said, you must ask yourself, how much of that value is the nominal value and how much of it is the premium? Could be, let us assume that the value of the shares is 20 million. Those are the value of the shares you, company B, you issued. But maybe these shares had a par value or a nominal value of 15 million and you issued them at a premium of 5 million. Listen, in the books of company A, when we were dealing with the 15 entries, Number 11, we said, with the receipt of the purchase consideration, either in form of cash, shares, or debentures. So if you, A, you received shares amounting to 20 million, you debited your shares account by 20. You debited your shares account by 20. For you, company A, you did not bother to find out how much out of the 20 is the premium? How much out of the 20 is the nominal? Why? Because you, you are receiving them as an asset. But you know, whenever a company issues shares, if the company issued the shares at a premium, you cannot take the amount of the premium to the share capital. Remember, we are issuing shares, so we must credit our share capital. But you cannot credit share capital with the amount of the premium. That's why. In the books of the selling, no purchasing company, they must ask themselves how much of the value of the shares is the nominal and how much of it is the premium. So if the nominal is 15, I'm assuming with the nominal value of the shares issued, you still debit the selling company and you credit share capital. 
if the shares were issued at a premium, you still debit the selling company and credit share premium. Here it would have been 15 and the premium would have been 5 million. That's what we are saying. Of course, not many questions come with the premium element, no. Otherwise, if it is there, you just separate. Most questions come where you issue the shares at less than the par value. So all of it will go to the share capital account. Good. So I've reminded you the entries in the books of the selling company. I've also reminded you the six entries in the books of the purchasing company. Good. Now, listen. Before we start an example, again, I have told you, and you know this, any time you are given the question of external construction, the examiner has never, never, never given you the amount we call the purchase consideration. Normally, it's your responsibility to calculate that amount, the amount we call the purchase consideration. What is it that you, company B, is costing you to buy company A? That is what we want to know. How much is it costing company B to buy A? In other words, how much is the purchase consideration? That will not be given. Now listen. Company B is buying company A. So to determine the purchase consideration, you will have to go through the question and you find out what is it that you as company B, what is it that you as company B, you are giving to the owners and financiers, to the owners and financiers of the selling company. What is it that you as company A, no, sorry, company B. What is it that you, as company B, you are giving to the owners and financiers of company A? So you will go through the question. You may find out, and you are told, one group of owners here are the ordinary shareholders. So to the ordinary shareholders, you, company B, the question told you maybe you gave them cash amounting to this much. Then you be again to the preference shareholders. They are part of the owners of company A. To them, what is it that you gave? Maybe the question tells you, you company B, you gave the preference shareholders of A some amount of debentures amounting to this much. You as company B, to the debenture holders, they are financiers. The debenture holders of company A, maybe you give them ordinary shares, whatever it is. So when you add these various forms of payments to the owners and financiers of the selling company, then you will get the total to be the purchase consideration. But before we leave this area, I hope you still remember and you know, remember we have said, whenever company A is being sold to company B, company A must liquidate themselves. And I told you somewhere, for company A to liquidate themselves, they might need some money to pay for liquidation expenses. Then I told you somewhere, what if company B, no, A, sorry, does not have the money they need? Maybe they need 2 million shillings to liquidate, but they don't have it. So because you, B, you want to buy them, you also decided, you also decided you are going to pay for them their liquidation expenses. You, B, you decided you are going to pay for them their liquidation when you are determining how much you be, when you are determining how much it costs you to buy A, we say this. If from the question you realize that B limited paid for the liquidation expenses of A, then you have to add that amount 
in the determination of the purchase consideration you have to add what we call liquidation expenses if it was paid by b by a otherwise if a paid them the two million on their own then it's not costing you a no you b it's not costing you but if you are the b company who paid for a liquidation expenses then it's a costing you you add that's how we determine the purchase consideration i don't think there's an area i've not reminded you now i've reminded you everything concerning how to deal with the entries in the books of the selling in the books of the purchasing i've also reminded you how to determine the purchase consideration good now with that idea now let me project a question that i want us to do now to apply what we have already said the question i want us to do is a question that came in may 2021 may 2021 i think it was question two listen this question was a very very similar question to another question which was tested in december 2009 very similar what the examiner just did of 2021 he went and took the question of 209 and changed the names of the company only otherwise the figures were the same everything everything the figures were the same so you can see sometimes a past paper question an old past paper question could be taken and brought to your sitting okay so it's sometimes good to be looking at those past paper questions Let's do the question now. Let's do the question now. Let's do the question. Let me project it. Okay, there it is. There it is. It's a question that came in May 2021 it was question number two and it says is it may 2021 or december let me confirm ah, it's may 2021 power oh. it's may 2021 okay fine so let me read it. It says, Sora Limited has been suffering great financial stress. The directors of Sora Limited decided that the company should be reconstructed. The following was the statement of financial position of Sora Limited as at 31st of March. 2021 you are given in that balance sheet you are given land and buildings land and machinery you are given furniture investments goodwill patent preliminary expenses then among the current assets you are given inventories trade receivables cash at bank then among a cash at bank then among the equities let me roll the question among the equities now you have ordinary shares of 10 each you have 10 8 percent preference shares of 50 each you have profit and loss account you can see the profit and loss account is in bracket what does it mean it means it's a retained loss then we go to non-current liabilities we find four percent debentures among the current liabilities we find trade payables accrued debenture interest that's all for the balance sheet let me roll the question additional information number one number one says on 1st april 2021 a new company trigger limited was formed to take over the business of swara limited trigger limited 
was formed with an authorized share capital or with an authorized share capital comprising of 600 million ordinary shares of shillings 10 each and 40 million 6% preference shares of 100 each. Listen, I just want to remind you, we said, when you see the term authorized share capital, don't confuse it with the issued share capital. Twigger has not issued these shares. This is just what we call authorized share capital. They are different from the issued share capital. I hope you remember when we were discussing this topic, I told you we came across a question. And you obviously know from your accounting knowledge that authorized share capital does not affect any accounting entries. It is just there for information. If it was issued share capital, then you can record. But these are just authorized share capital. How much the company is supposed to be registered with as their capital is what we call the authorized share capital. So Trigger Limited was formed with an authorized share capital of 600 million, ordinary of 10 each, and 40 million preference shares of 100 each. That is just there for information purposes. Number two, preference dividends in Swara, preference dividend in Swara were two years in arrears. Number three, three ordinary shares of 10 each, three ordinary shares of 10 each, credited at five each in Twiga, Twiga is the company buying, in Twiga Limited would be issued for each preference shares in Swara Limited. In addition, one fully paid preference share in Twiga Limited would be issued for every four preference shares in Swara. The preference shareholders would, however, pay the balance to make their shares fully paid. Number four, preference shareholders, the preference shareholders in Swara would forego half of their half of the preference dividends in arrears and would receive fully paid preference shares in Twigger Limited for the balance of the arrears of the preference dividends. Number five, one ordinary share of shillings 10 each credited at five in Twigger Limited would be issued for every two preference or for every two ordinary in Swara. The ordinary shareholders would, however, pay the balance to make their shares fully paid. We shall come back to one note after the other. Don't panic. Number six. Number six says the debenture holders would receive half of their dues, excluding interest, in 6% debentures of Twigger Limited and the balance in fully paid ordinary shares of Twigger Limited. Interest accrued on the debentures would be paid in cash by Twigger Limited after taking over Swara Limited. Seven, trade payables would be taken over by the new company and immediately settled by issue of fully paid ordinary shares of equal value. Number nine, eight, the assets of the assets were transferred to the new companies at the following values. That's how you are given land and buildings, plant and machinery, motor vehicle, furniture and fixtures, investments, inventory, trade receivables, cash at bank, inventories at book value less ten percent, trade receivables at book value less five percent, cash at bank at book values. Let me roll the question. That's number eight. Number nine. Number nine says, Trigger Limited paid 30 million shillings to Swara Limited to pay for the liquidation expenses. Who is paying? Trigger. Trigger is the purchasing company. They are paying 30 million to Swara to pay for the liquidation expenses. Number 10, Trigger Limited issued for cash and at par all the remaining ordinary shares and preference shares not issued as part of the settlement of the purchase consideration of Swara Limited. 11. 
assume that all the above transactions were completed on 1st of April 2021 required 1 or A the following accounts in the books of Swara 1 realization 2 figure limited 3 ordinary shareholders members 4 preference shareholders members B statement of financial position of trigger limited as at 1st April 2021 after completion good so before we do the entries we need to determine the purchase consideration and so we want to go back listen we want to go back to note number one note number two note number three note number four asking ourselves what is it that you as trigger what is it that you are giving to the owners and financiers of the selling company, which is Swara? To ordinary, what are you giving them? To preference, what are you giving them? To debenture orders, they somewhere you are told, and so on. So let's go back to note number one, note number two, note number three, looking for anything that you as trigger you gave in order to buy Swara. Good. So let's go back to note number one, number two, number three, that way. Looking for that information. Once we get it, we put it down, then we shall add all of it. Number one, I told you that is information for Twigger. It was authorized share capital, that they are having an authorized share capital of 600 million ordinary shares of 10 each, and 40 million preference shares of 100 each. That is just information that that is the amount of shares they have been authorized to issue. They have not issued yet, but they have been authorized to issue that. So you don't pass an entry, it's just there for information. Number two, preference shares or preference dividend in Swara were two years in arrears. For now, it is just information. Number three, three ordinary shares of 10 each, credited at five each in Twiga, would be issued Four, four, each preference share in Swara. What they are saying, you Twigger, what are you giving? You are giving three ordinary shares at a credit of five to two would be issued to who? To the preference shareholders in Swara. You are giving three ordinary for each, listen, for each preference share in Swara. So before we go to the next part, which are the addition, in addition, let's deal with that first. Let's compute that now. So Andy Kachini somewhere. Let's put it down. Number of ordinary shares. Number of ordinary shares. Is that way, sorry? Number of ordinary shares given to preference shareholders number of ordinary shares given to preference shareholders in Swara. So let's find out how many shares first. How many shares are you as Twigger giving? Number of ordinary shares. So let's go back. You are giving how many for every how many? They have said. Note number three. Three ordinary shares credited at five in Twiga would be issued for each preference shares in Swara. Listen, so for each preference share in Swara, one preference share in Swara, you as Twiga, you are giving three of your ordinary. To the preference shareholders, you are giving them three ordinary for every one preference. So we go back to the balance sheet of Swara and we ask ourselves, how many preference shares do they have? Me as Twigger, I am giving three of my ordinary for every one preference in Swara. So what is the number of preference shares in Swara? I go back to the balance sheet. So from the balance sheet of Swara, you can see there, down there, they have preference share capital or preference shares of 50 each and the amount is 3,600 or 3.6 million. Our, try, our balance sheet, if you look at that there, our balance sheet was in thousands. Up there, 
our balance sheet is in thousands. Meaning, 3,000 or 3.6 million in the balance sheet, 3,600,000 in the balance sheet is about 3.6 billion. Is 3.6 billion. One share in that company has a power value of 50. So how many shares were they having? So I take that 3.6 billion, I divide by 50. Our figures are in thousands. So let me just divide 3.6 million by 50. How many shares are those? 3.6 million by 15. That gives me 72 million. So let's put it just what about 72 million? Yeah. Remember our figures are already in thousands. It was 3.6 billion, but I've left the thousands so that I work with the figures of thousands. Good. So what about 72 million? It would be 72m times 3. I divide that by 1. What does it come to? So I take that 72 times 3. I divide by one, that looks like 216 million shares. But at what value are you giving these shares? Yes, you are giving 216 million ordinary. But at what value? It will be 216M times what? We are told by the question that you issued each at how much? That is not number two. Number three, sorry. Number three told us three ordinary shares of 10 each credited at five in Twiga would be issued for each preference share in Swara. Good. So we are giving out one share at five. We are giving out one share at five. Good. So multiply that by five. So what becomes the total value? 216 times five. That gives me 1080 million so that's one thing you as swara no sorry you as trigger you are giving you are giving your ordinary to who to preference good let's go back to the note number two note number three sorry to note number three sorry it went on to say in addition i remember somewhere they said that in addition number three goes on to say in addition second line in addition one fully paid preference share, one fully paid preference share in Twiga, Twiga is the company buying, would be issued for, for every four preference shares in Swara. Good. That in addition, one fully paid preference share in Twiga would be issued for every four preference shares in Swara. Good. Let's put down that working again. So come and see here number of preference shares issued to preference shareholders number of preference shares issued to preference shareholders in swara so let's go back and check you twiga you are giving how many of your preference to the preference shareholders in swara let me confirm wamesema in addition one fully paid, one fully paid preference in Twiga would be issued for every four. Good. So for every four shares in Swara, you as Twiga, for every four preference, you are giving one preference. What about? For every one preference, for every four preference in Swara, you Twiga, you are giving your one. So you go back and check. How many preference shares are they in Swara? I don't have to calculate them again. We have already used them up here. Because even here, we were saying for every one preference, we were giving three ordinary. So we went back to find out how many preference are we having. So we took 3.6 billion, if you remember, we divided by 50 to Kapata 72 million. We shall say what about 72 million? It will be 72 M times 1. We divide that by 4. So how many shares are we giving in terms of preference? 72 divided by 4. 
22 divided by 4, we are giving 18 million. Yes. Then we get the value for them. It will be 18 million times what? Listen, we are issuing preference. So we go find out. Will trigger. How are you issuing this preference? At what value? They told us. Listen, they told us. In addition, one fully paid. One fully paid. If you remember from note number one, we got the information from there. We get the information from there. You trigger your preference shares have a value of how much? If you look at note number one, the last sentence, and 40 million six percent preference shares of 100 each. So we now know in trigger, one preference share has a power value of 100. And we are issuing one preference, one fully paid preference. If in total we are issuing 100, no, 18 million, what are at 100, that looks like how much? 1,800 million. That one I don't have to have a calculator. No, just take 18 million times 100. Good. Now I know that we also gave preference shareholders in Swara, we also gave them our preference shares. Good. That's note number three. Let's go to the next one. We are looking for, we are still looking for what you, as Swara, you are giving. That's all for note number three. Number three went on to say the preference shareholders would however pay the balance to make their shares fully paid. That's okay. We go to number four. Number four, they are saying, Preference shareholders in Swara would forgo. Preference shareholders in Swara would forgo half of their half of the preference dividends in arrears and would receive fully paid preference shares in Trigger Limited for the balance of the arrears. Sorry, let me repeat. Preference shareholders in Swara Limited would forgo half of their preference dividends in arrears, would forgo and would receive, yeah, good, okay, and would receive fully paid, fully paid preference shares in Twigger for the balance of their arrears. Good. What they're saying there is this You, Swara, you owe your preference shareholders some dividends. You trigger, you agreed with them, they forgo half of their dividends, but you will pay them the other half in terms of shares, fully paid shares. So the only thing we need to know is the amount of their arrears. We don't even need to calculate the dividends, or the shares. We just know half of that will be paid by trigger in terms of, in terms of shares. So we just need to calculate what is the preference dividends? So come and see your preference dividends in arrears. Don't forget somewhere we were told by note number two, I think so, that dividends were two years in arrears. Let me confirm. We were told somewhere the preference dividends were two years in arrears. Yes, note number two told us preference dividend in Swara were two years in arrears. Good. So you go back to the balance sheet find out what's the rate of dividends and what is the share capital. From this balance sheet, if you look at the balance sheet up there, we have 8% preference share capital whose value, whose nominal value is 3.6 billion. Our figures, we are using millions, so we multiply that by 6,000. So it will be 8% of 3,600 million. Don't forget we are putting our figures in millions. Multiply that by two years. We have not paid the arrears for the last two years. Good. So how much is the arrears? It will be 8% times 3,600 times two years. So the arrears are 576 million. 576 million. So half of this will be given in terms of shares. So we don't even need to put down. When we shall be adding the total of the purchase consideration, we shall just remember that. Okay? We shall just have to remember that. Good. Let's go to the next one. 
Next one, we are still looking for what is it that you as the purchasing company, you are giving to the owners and financiers of the selling company. Good. So that's all for note number three. No, note number four. Note number four. Number five. Number five says, one ordinary share of shillings 10 each credited at five each in Twiga, in Twiga Limited would be issued for every two ordinary shares in Swara. One ordinary share of 10 each credited at five in Twiga will be issued for every two ordinary shares in Swara. Good. So the ordinary shareholders in Swara are receiving again ordinary. Let's come and put it down this way. Number of ordinary shares, number of ordinary shares issued to ordinary shareholders. Number of ordinary shares issued to ordinary shareholders in Swara. So let's go back again and get the ratio. Let's get the ratio. Or may say one for every what? That was not number what, five. One ordinary shares would be issued for every two. Good. So for every two ordinary use twiga, you are issuing one ordinary. For every two in Swara, you twiga, you are issuing your one. What about? So you go back to the balance sheet of twiga. You go to the balance sheet of Swara. For every two of their ordinary, me as Twiga, I'm issuing one of my of my ordinary. What about? So from the balance sheet of Swara, what is their share capital in terms of ordinary? From this balance sheet up there, I hope you can see the share capital of the ordinary is three billion. Are you seeing it there? Three billion. If I divide that by ten, if I divide that by ten. That gives me 300 million. 3 billion divided by 10. 300 million. So let's put it. What about 300 million? So we come and say it will be 300 M times 1. I divide that by 20. No, by 2, not 20, sorry. This is 2. Because this is too ordinary, not 20 ordinary. This is too ordinary. For every two ordinary, I'm giving out my one ordinary. Good. So what about 300 million? It will be 150 million. Good. Then come and say, what about the value? What's the value? It will be 150 million times what? The question told us. Question told us. I think they say it. At a credit of what? The question told us, not number five, one ordinary share of 10 each credited at five. Credited at five. Good. So we come and say here, multiply that by five. So that looks like 750 million. Good. So you as Twigger, you are giving your ordinary shares amounting to 750 million. To the ordinary shareholders of Swara. Good. Next. Let's go to the next note. We are through with that. That's note number five. Number six. Number six says the debenture holders would receive the debenture holders would receive half of half of their dues except the accrued interest in 6% debentures of Twiga and, and the balance in fully paid ordinary shares of Twiga. Good. So I just need to know, listen, half of the debentures would be paid in terms of 6% debenture. What you just needed to do, listen, there is no calculation we are putting down there. What you just needed to do is to know what is the value of the debenture. If you go to the balance sheet of Swara, 
I can see they have a 4% debenture mounting to 2.4 billion, amounting to 2.4 billion. Note number six says what? Note number six says what? It says the debenture holders would receive half of their dues in 6% debenture. That means they would receive 1.2 billion because the total is 2.4 billion. 1.2 billion would be in terms of 6% debenture and the balance in fully paid ordinary shares. So they would receive another ordinary amount to 2.4 billion. So a 1.2 billion, sorry. So we don't have to calculate that. That is something you can just do it as you are adding the various forms of payment. So you remind me about that number six. Number seven, trade payables will be taken over by the new company and immediately settled by fully by issuing fully paid ordinary shares. That is after taking over. That's not costing them. Number eight. Number eight, let me roll it. Number eight is about how you took over the assets. That does not affect the purchase consideration. Number nine, Trigger Limited paid 30 million to Swara to pay for the dissolution. I've told you we shall add. Number 10, Trigger Limited issued for cash and at par all the remaining ordinary shares and preference shares not issued as part of the settlement of the purchase consideration. Good. That's another entry they will take on their own. They will undertake on their own. Finally, number 11, all the above transactions are assumed. Assume all the above transactions were completed on that day. Good. Now we know the components of the purchase consideration. Now we can come and say here, determination of the purchase consideration. Determination of the purchase consideration. Let's now add all the various forms. Let's now add all those various forms of payments. Good. So we go back. Number one, number two, number three, that way, that way, that way. Good. The first one they said is what? Here. Number of ordinary shares issued to preference shares. Good. So we come and say here, to preference shareholders. What are we giving to them? Let me put in bracket what I'm giving to them because we need to know what you are giving to them because of the last note. They told us the balance of the shares not issued will be paid or will be issued. So we need to know what are we giving and at what value. So the first one is here, 216 million. We are told number of ordinary shares given to preference. So we give them 216 million at a credit of five. Good. Come and put in bracket. 216 million ordinary at a credit of five. That came to 10, 50, 1080, I think so. Let me confirm. Yes, 1080. These figures are in shillings millions, so it will be 1080. That's the first one. We go back. There's another place where we were also told something. Next, what was it? Again here, number of preference shares issued to preference shareholders. Good. You come and say again, to preference shareholders. What did we give them? We gave them preference amounting to how many? Where is it? Here. Number of preference shares issued to preference shareholders. We got 18 million. Are you seeing it there? At how much? At 100 each. That gave us 1,800 million. Good. We gave them 18 million at a credit of 100. That gave us 1,800. Good. Next. After that, we are still going back. After that, I can see here. Look at it. Next year, we have preference dividends in areas. That's what we calculated. And I told you half of it would be paid in terms of what? I've forgotten. Let's go back. We know the areas, but we were told half of it would be paid in terms of what? 
Let's go and check. That was not number four. That not number four. Preference dividends or preference shareholders would forgo half of their half of their arrears and and would receive would receive two sorry would receive fully paid preference shares would receive fully paid preference shares in trigger limited for the balance good so they would receive half of this the arrears is 576 let me divide that by two 576 i divide it by two to get the value of the preference shares so we come and see here the KV to preference shareholders for dividends in arrears. I am giving them, listen, on the extreme, I am giving them 288 worth of shares. 288. Why? Because the total arrears was 587, 578. But I want to put in bracket what is it that I'm giving. Wamesema and half of that will be given in fully paid preference. So listen, we are giving them fully paid preference at how much? Listen. Oh, sorry, sorry. Let me go back. Let me go back. I forgot something here. We need to know what we are giving. Here, when we said 18 million, listen to me this. When we said 18 million, we said number of preference shares issued. So I forgot to write in bracket here, 18 million preference here. Indicate that it is preference. The first one I said to 16 million ordinary, that's okay. The second one I just said 18 million, but I did not say what it is. I am putting there because I need this information later. Because we were told the balance of the shares not issued will be given. So. We are giving, now we are the third one, we are giving preference amounting to 288 million. Listen, fully paid preference. One preference, we were told by note number one, has a power value of 100. So how many preference shares are you giving? Listen, if I'm giving preference amounting to 288 million, and one share has a power value of 100, it means if I take 28 million divided by 100, that gives me 2.88 million preference. Now put it down, 2.88 million preference. That's what we are giving to amount to 288 million. We are told they forgo half of their arrears and the balance to be issued by issuing fully paid fully paid preference shares. So one share has a power value of 100. So we are giving preference amounting to 288. So I needed to know how many shares are these. So I take the value of the shares we are giving, 288, divide by the value of each share, 100. That gives me 2.88 million. Good. From there, what did we go to next? After the arrears are good. I can see the next item we came to is ordinary shares number of ordinary shares issued number of ordinary shares issued to ordinary shareholders so let's come and say this to ordinary shareholders to ordinary shareholders what are we giving to them let me go back we are told number of ordinary shares issued to ordinary shareholders and i can see down here it is 150 times five so we give them 150 million ordinary good we we'll put it there 150 million ordinary at a credit of five 150 million ordinary at a credit of five give me 750 good that is it next good so from the workings we are through from the workings we are through but there was that information about the debenture which i told you half of the debentures were paid this way this way this way good 
to come and say to the bench holders, we have several debentures, so we can quote from the balance sheet, which was the percentage. We have several debentures, so we can only separate them by the percentages. So the original debentures were carrying what rate? They were carrying 4%. Then that means in total they are 2.4. I hope you can see it there. But there's that note that told us that was note number six. Note number six says the debenture holders would receive half of their dues, excluding accrued interest, in in six percent debentures of Trigger Limited. Let's first give them half of the 2.4 in terms of six percent. So come and say you're two four percent debenture holders. 4% debenture holders put in bracket 6% debenture. That's what we are giving. The figure is 2.4 billion. Our figures are in millions, so it will be 2.4, no, 1,200 million. Half. The debentures were 2.4 billion, I hope you remember. Now, 1.2 billion is what we are giving in terms of. Then they have said the other half. In what? Let's now go back. The other half in terms of what? That was not number six. And the balance, second line, and the balance in fully paid, and the balance in fully paid ordinary shares, and the balance in fully paid ordinary shares, and the balance in fully paid. So come and see here two for percent debenture holders. Again, to 4% debenture holders, we are giving them another 1.2 billion worth of ordinary, fully paid. So we come and say your ordinary shares at, you know, listen, note number one told us, each share in Twigger had a power value of 10. I hope you remember, the preference had a power value of 20, 100, but ordinary had a power value of 10. So if we are giving 1.2 billion in terms of ordinary and one share has a power value of 10 how many shares are these it will be 120 million good so we are giving out 120 million ordinary at 10 each good that is it that was all for number six number seven i told you it has nothing to do with our purchase consideration number eight i told you it has nothing to do with our purchase consideration. But finally, we saw that you, Twigger, you are the one paying for the liquidation. So we heard you come and see your liquidation expenses. And somewhere I read, if I remember not number eight, we paid, is it number eight or nine? Number nine. We, as Twigger, paid how much? 30 million. 30 million, yes, to Swara, so that they can pay for the dissolution. So we give it. 30 million our figures are already in millions good so now we know now we know all the various components this question was a bit long to get the purchase consideration this was a bit long some questions have only two or three items but this one has several so let me add all of them now 1080 plus 1800 plus 288 plus 750 plus 1200 plus another 1200 plus 30 million this gives me 6348 6348 that's our purchase consideration that is our purchase consideration good we have no time to start the actual part of the question now but i have reminded you the entries so next time we shall now do the accounting entries now listen next time we shall do now accounting entries now listen in an exam in an exam hope you are listening you don't have to if you find that you have no time to compute this purchase consideration it will take a bit of time 
why don't you do the others and do the obvious other entries which are obvious and leave this computation of the purchase consideration it will take you long to do it and yet it will only give you one or two marks why can't you enter all the other 14 entries remember in the books of the selling there were 14 so omit the one of the purchase consideration leave it just enter the others close the assets taken over with the liabilities taken over leave the purchase consideration go to the other entries close the assets close the liabilities blah 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 then you come and determine so we are saying in an exam you may be caught up with time be in the obvious there are some entries which were obvious in the books of the selling in the books of the purchasing there are obvious entries just leave this one of the purchase consideration because it will take you a bit of time to compute it okay good so for now allow me to stop there we pick it up from there next time where now we shall do part b no part a of the question where we shall now do the entries in the books of the selling i want to stop there because of another class i want to stop there because i have another class see you next time